Hello everyone, Keyboard Alchemist here and welcome back to another Stable Diffusion tutorial. Today we are going to talk about Regional Prompt Control. This is a feature that is within the Tile Diffusion and Tiled VAE extension that we talked about in my last video. If you have been playing with Stable Diffusion, then I'm sure you have heard about Regional Prompter. Regional Prompter allows you to divide your image into different sections and prompt for different things using some keywords like add row or add column. This is perfectly good and all, but it can be a bit confusing and clunky to use. Instead, I want to show you a different method called Regional Prompt Control, which allows you to draw regions on a canvas, define different prompts in each of the regions you draw, and visualize the ideal composition all within the automatic 1111 web UI. Regional Prompt Control is a fantastic tool to help you break away from that boring, well-centered one-girl portrait that we have all come to know so well, so you can experiment and compose your image like a boss. All right, without further ado, I'll quit my yapping and actually show you how to do this. As I've mentioned a bit earlier, Regional Prompt Control is a part of the Tile Diffusion extension, which is an awesome extension in its own right. Having Regional Prompt Control within it is just icing on the cake. If you do not have Tiled Diffusion installed, go ahead and check out my previous video where I go through the installation steps in detail. I'll leave a card on the top right and link in the descriptions. The installation steps for Tiled Diffusion start at 1.05 in that other video. Assuming you have already installed the Tiled Diffusion extension, let's start by generating an image with a girl on the beach. But instead of generating a portrait image with the girl at the center of the image, I want the girl to be on the left-hand side of a 1280 by 512 wide image. If I generate this normally without the help of regional prompt control, I will get an image that looks something like this. Two girls, one on each side of the image. This is because SD 1.5 models are trained on 512 by 512 images. And when you extend the width of the image, the model will want to generate two 512 by 512 images side by side. Or you could get an image that's more like this, where the main subject of the image is in the middle of the image, and you are not going to get the composition you are looking for. So now let's see how we can solve this problem with the help of regional prompt control. First, I'm going to cut the description for the girl out of the main positive prompt. We are going to put it into the regional prompt section in a little bit. Enable tile diffusion and enable regional prompt control as well. Select the mixture of diffusers method. This is just a personal preference, you can try the multi-diffusion method as well. Don't worry about changing the latent tile width, height, and overlap settings. These settings are not used when regional prompt control is enabled. Click on Create Text to Image Canvas, and a blank canvas that is the same size as the text to image width and height will be created. We will enable Region 1. After clicking on the Enable Region 1 button, we can see that a transparent red box shows up on the canvas. We will use this red box to define our background region. In most cases, you would want the background region to cover the entire canvas, so I will drag the corners of the red box and stretching it out to cover the whole canvas. I want the background to be a white sandy beach, so I'll put that into the positive prompt box. Note, whatever you put in the regional prompt field will be appended to the main text-to-image prompt which is why I only left image quality keywords in the main prompt. This allows us to define whatever we like in our regions by adding specific prompts. In this case, what we will have for the final region one prompt is going to be best quality, masterpiece, ultra high res, highly detailed, white sandy beach. I don't need any additional negative prompts for this region, so I will leave it blank. Now for region two, this is where we want to define the girl. Enable region two by checking the box then set the type to foreground. When you select the foreground type, a feather slider will show up. This feather value determines how much the foreground image is blended into the background image. I will explain this setting a bit more later, but for now, let's keep the default value of 0.2. Let's paste our prompt for the girl into this regional positive prompt box and get rid of the white sandy beach part since that is already taken care of by the background and region one prompt. With foreground images, it's a lot easier to drag and drop your region box directly on the canvas so you can decide how large you want your foreground object to be and where you want it to be on the canvas. Any changes you make on the canvas will be reflected in the X, Y width, and height fields. Don't forget to enable Tile VAE to make the image generation more efficient. Now that everything is set correctly, let's click on Generate.
Skipping ahead here, we can see that the image came out great. One note, I did make a batch of four images in this generation, and two of the four images did not turn out so great. I can't show them to you because they were a bit grotesque, and probably not safe for work. And that is just because of RNG. You can add a bit more negative prompts to control for it, or you can just generate some more images and cherry pick the good ones. But in any case, the regional prompt control will always give you the composition that you have defined in the canvas. This type of positional control is something that you cannot do consistently with prompts alone. Here's a tip regarding the seed values. The main seed value in text to image determines your resulting image. The seed values that are in the regional prompts does not matter as long as I keep the main seed constant. Here is a quick test to show you what I mean. Initially I generated this image while having a negative 1 value for both the region 1 and region 2 seeds. But now I am changing the seeds for region 1 and 2 to arbitrary values rather than keeping it at the negative 1 value, then generate the image again. Once the image is generated, we can see that we get the exact same image as before. So this means you do not have to bother with changing the seed values within the regional prompt sections. Here are some additional tips for working with the regions. If you change the position of a region, even if it is by a tiny bit, it could have a significant effect on your final image. Here I am only moving the region 2 box slightly to the right, and the resulting image is very different. Of course, if I move the region 2 box all the way to the right-hand side, it is to be expected that my final image will change to the girl being on the right side of the image. Additionally, if you change the size of the region box, it will also change your image dramatically. This makes sense because it works similarly to your normal text-to-image generation, where if you change the size of your image, say from 512 by 512 to 512 by 768, you will get two very different images. Okay, now I will show you how to work with more than one foreground region at a time. I will move the region 2 box back to the left-hand side of the image. Then I will enable a third region. Remember to change the type to foreground. We can leave the featherweight at the default value. I will put the region 3 box on the right-hand side, and I will prompt for a sailboat in this region. Then I will click on Generate. Fast forward here a bit and we can see that the resulting image included a sailboat in the distance. That's very good. You can experiment a bit with moving the region boxes around and changing the sizes to get that perfect image. But once you have it, if you ever hope to regenerate the same exact image, you are going to need two things. First thing would be the original image generation parameters, which is easy to get since it's saved in your PNG file. The second would be the configuration of your regions, and in order to recall the configuration of your canvas, you will need to save it into a config file. To do this, come over to the custom config file field and give the config file a name and keep the .json extension. You will see a message confirming the file is saved. Now to load the saved config file is a bit more tricky, follow these steps closely. Before you load the config file, you must create a canvas that is the same size as the size of the image in the config file. Go to Text to Image section and fill in the image size, then click Create Canvas. You want to copy the file name of the config file, and it must be exactly the same, otherwise you will get an error. What I do is to navigate to the config file save folder and copy the file name. Your config files are saved within the Tiled Diffusion or Multi Diffusion Extensions folder. Go to your main Stable Diffusion install folder and navigate to Extensions, and then the Multi-Diffusion Upscaler subfolder, and finally, Region Configs. Copy the entire file name, then come back to the web UI and paste it into the Custom Config File field, then click the Load button. The first time you click on the Load button, the config file is not going to load correctly. But don't panic, all you have to do is to click the Load button again, then everything should be loaded in the right place. Now if we click on Generate with the same previous image settings, then we are going to get the exact same image as before. Let's circle back to the topic of foreground feather value. The feather value goes from 0 to 1 in 0 0.05 increments.
Based on my testing, I think a value of zero means there will not be any tile overlap between the foreground image and the background image, and therefore, the foreground image will not be blended into the background image. Most of the time you can see a visible seam around the foreground image. Conversely, with the feather value equal to 1, there will be a maximum amount of tile overlap between the foreground and background image. But you don't necessarily want to have the feather value be 1, because it actually introduces some significant artifacts at the edge of your foreground image. In our example here, as the feather value gets higher, we can see that there are some additional stuff being added at the edges. When the value is lower, this artifact is not that apparent, but as the value increases, it gets more and more unusual to say the least. Above a feather value of 0.8, it actually started to change our foreground image too much. Here the girl's pose has changed and the legs look a bit odd. In most cases, I would recommend leaving the feather weight at the default value of 0.2 or increasing it by just a little bit. If you like this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It's totally free to do and it will help me out with the almighty algorithm. Thank you. Now let's talk how you can use regional prompt control to help you solve common image generation problems. Let's say that I want to create an image of Tifa and Aerith from Final Fantasy VII in the same image, and I want to use two different LoRa's to do this. Normally, if you put two or more LoRa's in the same prompt, both of the LoRa's are going to affect your entire image, and you will end up getting a sort of mixing effect of the LoRa's. This is a perfect use case for regional prompt control, because we can use a totally different prompt in separate regions to easily generate two or more distinct characters. In this canvas, I have set up region 1 as the background, then on the left is region 2 for drawing Tifa, and region 3 on the right for drawing Aerith. Just like what we have done previously, I have only image quality keywords in the main text to image prompt, then we want to add or append the appropriate prompts to each of the corresponding regional prompt sections. Note, I have previously generated a few different batches of images to arrive at a good seed value. You will likely have to do this as well, unless you have been blessed by our Jesus. Another cool thing that might not be readily apparent upon first glance is that we can use Ada Taylor to fix up the faces after regional prompt control is done with the initial image generation. The image generation will run through with tile diffusion and regional prompt control first, then Addy Taylor will start to work on the faces of the initial image, which is what's happening here. If you want more details regarding how to set up and use Addy Taylor, go ahead and check out my previous After Detailer video. I'll leave a card on the top right and link in the video descriptions. We can also use Control Net Open Pose with Regional Prompt Control to make the characters more dynamic with the specific pose that we want. Here I have another image of Tifa and Aerith that I have generated with the same setup in Regional Prompt Control, but using a different checkpoint, which is why this image looks so different. What I wanted to do initially was I made Region 2 and Region 3 overlap a bit more to see if I can get some interaction between the two characters. However, this is hard to do. As we can see, in most of the images that I've generated, they are standing or sitting far apart. But we can change this with Control Net Open Pose. Scroll down to the Control Net section. Enable Control Net and check the Pixel Perfect box. Then click on the Open Pose Radio button. I already have the Open Pose Stick Model image, so there is no need to select a pre-processor. But if you are using an image or a photo instead, then you will need to leave the Open Pose Full Pre-Processor selected or you can select one of the other preprocessors. Then for control mode, select control net is more important, and for resize mode, select just resize, then start generation. With the exception of some hand artifacts, the final image is pretty good with both Tifa and Aerith still preserving their own distinct character features, even though they are now interacting much closer. The last use case that I want to show you combines the power to generate very large images from tile diffusion and the ability to compose an image at will from regional prompt control to generate something that is truly amazing. Here is the play-by-play. -play. I started by generating a batch of 512 by 512 isometric images of a village, found a seed that I liked in that batch, and turned on tile diffusion and tiled VAE 
to generate a larger image by changing the width and height to 2048 by 1024. With tile diffusion turned on, the isometric village prompt will get replicated tile by tile and fill the entire image. Next, I enabled regional prompt control, then dragged and dropped the generated image into the canvas. This will serve as a reference image such that when I define different regions on the canvas, I would be able to know the relative location. The reference image is there for convenience only. It doesn't affect the outcome of the generated image. Then I proceeded to define the background region and four additional foreground regions. Defining the background region, region 1, will change the entire image, so I regenerated the image with the same seed. The first foreground region is region 2, I wanted there to be a town square here. Since the image has changed quite a bit, I loaded the newly generated image into the canvas area for easier reference. The first image generation was not bad, but I wanted it to blend into the background a bit better, so I increased the featherweight to 0.6 and also added the prompts, clock tower and fountain, then expanded the region box a bit. Skipping ahead, now we can see a very nice town square with a clock tower and a fountain in the middle. In the second foreground region, region 3, I wanted there to be a pier, dock, ships and boats. In the next foreground region, region 4, I wanted to add a tavern or inn. Then in the last foreground region, region 5, I wanted to add a castle, but that didn't work out too well. Maybe there is not enough space to draw a full castle, so I scrapped that idea and just added a marketplace and merchants. In between adding these regions, I also tweaked the size of the region boxes and feather values a bunch of times to try to get the image that I wanted. At the end of all that, I got an image that looked like this. Then I sent this image to image to image for upscaling. I started off by using the tiled diffusion plus control net tile method to upscale the image by 2x. Some of the more important parameters are denoising strength equals 0.65, upscaler was 4x foolhardy remecri, and turning on fast encoder color fix. Control net tile is crucial here because it kept the image composition the same as the original, and it helped to add additional details to the image. After about 20 minutes, the first upscale step was done. The image is now 40, 96 by 20, 48. And let's look at the amount of detail that is in the image. Just a side note here, using control net tile and a large denoising strength is going to produce a very busy looking image with lots of small details in the image. So if you think the image is too messy or too busy, you can turn down the denoising strength a bit. Next, I proceed to upscale the image 2x again to 8192 by 4096 using the same method. This step added even more detail to the image. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the upscaled image versus the image from the previous step. Just look at the amount of detail in the upscaled image. Then I upscaled the image from 8192 by 4096 two more times, the first time upscaling by 2x, and the second time upscaling only by 1.5x because I reached the upper limit of what my computer can do with the available memory. Although for these upscale steps, I turned off control net and only used tile diffusion to save some time. As such, I had to decrease the denoising strength between 0.35 to 0.45 to avoid changing the image too much. In the end, I ended up with a 24,576 by 12,288 image, which is a 300 megapixel image, and the result was astonishing. Take a look. If we zoom in very close, we can almost see the faces on the people in the town square. If I had more VRAM and shared RAM, I can upscale this image by 2x again, and I think at that point, the people's faces would be very clear. Now this image isn't perfect, there are some miniature buildings and other things that are not to scale. 
but overall the amount of details in the image is amazing. Just look at the intricate patterns in the brick walls, the tiled rooftops, the windows, the grass, the trees, the water, the ships, and the list goes on and on. Alright, I'm going to stop talking for a bit and just admire the details. Okay, that wraps it up for this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel, and I will see you in the next video.